Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa usalli wa usallam ala Sayyid al-Awwaleen wal Akhirin Nabiyyana Muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Wa barak wa sallam All praise are due to Allah, Lord of the Worlds And peace and blessings be constantly showered Upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad The master of the first and the last His family, his companions and all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, my beloved brothers and sisters, to those in the viewing audience, I begin with the words, reading words of the righteous, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, it is a great privilege, great honor to be with you here again after many years, and it's inspiring to hear people like uh, John Rees and uh, other people from different religions and different ways in solidarity with the oppressed people in Philistine and in Lebanon and around the world. This is inspiring to me because my family in America were primarily African Americans. Millions of our people were brought over, put into slavery, and up until today, there are still forms of apartheid and, and forms of discrimination and hate that we are suffering through. My grandmother was from the indigenous people, the Mohawk, the indigenous people of America. Many of you have heard about the indigenous people. They want to forget about us. They want to push you aside. That is the settler colonial project, to destroy, to commit genocide, and then to make people forget. But alhamdulillah, this is a new world, and we will not forget the struggle of any of our indigenous people, any of our oppressed people, anywhere in the world. I would be remiss not to mention three elephants in the room, three existential threats to humanity. So the struggle for the people in Philistine, in that region, is not just a struggle in the so-called Middle East. It is a struggle for the whole of humanity, for the planet. Number one is that what we are witnessing is the destruction of the rules-based order. After the horrors of the 20th century, a number of international organizations were set up. The World Trade Organization, the Universal Declaration of Rights, Geneva Convention, Paris Climate Control, United Nations. What we are seeing with the brutal genocide that is happening is the destruction of the rules-based order. It will turn to what the Arabs call Qanun al ghaba It is the rule of the jungle. And in this terrible time, Muslims have to come forward. We have to realize who we are and to reach out in solidarity to people of consciousness around the world. The second point, the second existential threat, threat that we are all facing, that is the nuclear threat. Right now, according to the doomsday clock that they set for the destruction of the earth by nuclear weapons, we have reached 90 seconds before midnight. This is an existential threat to what we know as civilization and human life on the planet. Number three is the danger of the climate catastrophe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing down a punishment on this planet. People are suffering because of water, not having enough or too much. The floods are raging in so many different parts of the world. The seas are rising. Allah is also using fire. The heat is rising all over the planet. Wildfires, droughts in many parts of the world, and wind. Wind is also coming down. Hurricanes, tornadoes. To the point where, whenever they report on it, they say, this is the worst 
hurricane, the worst flood that we have had in living memory. But the masses of the people don't know about this. Something is happening. We are living in an age of deception. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did not speak from himself. He spoke with knowledge from above seven heavens. In an authentic hadith reported by Anas ibn Malik an, the Prophet Sallallahu was reported to have said, Inna amama dajjal sinina khada'a yukadhibu fiha sadiq wa yusaddiqu fiha al-kadhib wa yukhawinu fiha al-ameen wa yu'temenu fiha al-kha'in wa yatakallamu fiha ruwaybida qila wa mar ruwaybida qala al-fuwaysiq yatakallam fi amr al-ama The Prophet Sallallahu is reported to have said verily preceding the Antichrist preceding the coming of Dajjal will be years of deception in which the truthful are considered liars. The liars are believed. Just go to your media. The trustworthy are discredited and the treacherous will be trusted and the disgraceful will speak out. It was said, O Messenger of Allah, who was these disgraceful ones? And the Prophet ﷺ said, little wicked men who speak out on the affairs of the masses of the people. And it's interesting that the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about these leaders, these wicked leaders, he didn't say fasik, he said fuwaisik, which means a little despicable person who is in the leadership of our countries. Look at the United Nations, look at our governments, look at the people who are supposed to be leading us in this time of crisis where the leader is supposed to be the best of people. And, and so in this time of confusion, we have to now look at ourselves. We cry for change. We cry for political change, economic change, social change. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us in his glorious book, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change that which is in themselves. No change. And so we need to look within ourselves. I never thought that I would live to see the time when Muslims have great wealth, we have hundreds and thousands of soldiers at arms, we have strategic position around the world, but yet we still witness the suffering of children burnt to death in Philistine. There's something wrong with our concept of being Muslim. We need to have a great reset to reset our, our idea of Islam. That Islam is not just eating halal food. It's not just having a long beard. It's not just coming from a certain country. There are certain issues. The quality of a Muslim, and this the younger generation needs to come forward. And we pray that Allah would help them to be able to make this great reset if we do not make this reset ourselves. I come to you speaking not from the mind, but from the heart. After 44 years being in the Muslim communities, in Dawa and Irshad, 63 countries traveling to the Muslims, feeling their pain, and especially in the Western world, we realize we need some practical solutions. And I want to speak to you from the heart, directly to the point. Number one, we need to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to do what we do for Allah and not for our organizations. There is too much organizational fanaticism. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, in his last legacy, he said, there is a thing called hizbiyyah. That is organizational fanaticism. That people attend the conferences because that's my organization. People follow the Imam because he's my school of thought. 
This is my way. These are my people. We have to change our understanding that we are not just people of one group or one ethnicity. We are Muslims. We are part of an ummah. And if we are together, then we represent one of the most powerful forces on the face of the planet Earth. If If we are not together, then we represent what the Prophet ﷺ said, Ghusa sail. You will be like the foam and the scum on the water. Push to the right, push to the left, because your foundations are not strong. Number two, we need to return to authentic sources, to base our Islam on the first generations and not on our culture. And by going to authentic sources, it needs to be inclusive, that we include all the schools of thoughts, all of the imams, all of the leaders, and not restrict to one little tiny corner. We, Allah named us Muslimun, Muhsinun, Mu'minun. That's what Allah named us. And so we need to come back to Ummah consciousness, the consciousness that we are one great nation, throughout this world. Number three, that the basis of our Islam needs to be our character, not just rituals. We are teaching our children ibadat, how to pray, how to fast, and that is important. But the key now is, what did you get from your prayer? What did you get from your fast? Allah said, inna salata tanha an al wal munka, that prayer will keep you away from evil and corruption. And so we need to go past the rituals to the character, because it was the character of the Muslims standing up for truth, not just for Muslims. Anywhere they saw wrong, they would stand against that wrong. That is the duty of the Muslims in this world. Number four, and this is especially here in the Western world, it could apply to the, to the Muslim world as well. We need to build and protect healthy, empowered families. The family is the basis of our ummah. If the families are falling apart, everything will fall apart. Right now, there is a marriage session that was going on. Many of the young people are confused about marriage. They're confused about which way to go. We need to, to focus on this, and, and the essence of this is to focus on Muslim women. That Muslim women need to be empowered, need to be ulama, need to be leaders. I was so pleased when Sister Fatima came on and gave one of the most important talks in this conference. Healthy, empowered families. Number five, an emphasis on youth. They will live in the future. How many of our masjids have programs for the youth? What is the, what is the direction of this ummah? If we look at our youth, the majority of Muslims are under 25 years old. And so we need to focus on the youth, get the youth directly involved, especially in the age that we are living in, because this is an age where the young people have their relationship with social media different than the older generation. Number six, in the great Reset. How do we reset our concept of being Muslim? Shura. Mutual consultation. We don't talk to each other enough. Father and mother talk to each other. Talk to the children. Masjids have town hall meetings. Form Majlis Shura. This is critical for us at this point in time. And if you look at the Prophet ﷺ, you will see that Shura was, was a key issue within his movement. Number seven, to empower new Muslims. Those who are embracing Islam, and my beloved brother Abdurrahim Green was here today, and you saw that he said, it's not just giving shahada, but it is helping the new Muslim. That will be new blood to be infused into our bodies. We need new blood. You look at the great spread of Islam, the great leaders of Islam, and you see Sultan, uh, uh, Sultan Ayyub. You will see the great leaders. You, you will see that uh, Salahuddin Ayyubi, Rahimahullah, 
He was not an Arab. He was Kurdish. You will see that Muhammad Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih, the opener of Constantinople, he was not an Arab. He was Turkish. And so new blood, when new blood comes in and becomes part of this ummah, that has been the greatness of us. Number eight, and this is a deep point. I say it with all sincerity. You, we need to confront the demons of tribalism and racism. That there should be no difference between us. The Prophet ﷺ said no difference between black and white. No difference between Arab and non-Arab. That means that if there is something happening in Bosnia, I am affected. If the Rohingya Muslims are affected, I am affected. If Sudan is in struggle, I am affected. Not just because of my ethnicity or my tribe. Our Islam goes above the ethnicity and the tribe. And when we have this, we become a great ummah. Number nine, operational unity. Some people say, well, how can we unite, brother? We're, we're a little bit different. If you look at other Muslims, and I'm speaking especially about the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, most of what we do, 95% is the same. So we need to start looking at other Muslims for what they do that's similar and not what they do that is different. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ had operational unity. What do I mean by operational unity? You can agree to disagree with somebody. When it was time for Salat amongst the companions, they would look to see who can lead the Salat. If Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was there, a small Yemeni man, he would lead Salat. And Khalid ibn Walid, six foot tall, his leader was ibn Mas'ud. A short man, weak physically, but a master of the Quran. When the enemies of Allah came on the scene, they said, where is Khalid? Put Khalid in the front. We know the strengths and weaknesses of each other. Then we become an ummah, not warring factions. I am a Sufi, I am a Salafi, I am Ikhwani, I am Tablighi. We're Muslims. We're part of the same ummah. And it's this consciousness that we need today. And number 10, that we need to provide Islamic solutions to the relevant real-life issues in the world. The Palestine genocide. What is the Islamic solution? The environmental crisis. Wealth disunity. Racism. Oppression of women. The danger of the misuse of technology. We need to put Islam in the front to be able to give solutions in a world that is in great crisis today. But when we do this, when we do this, when we make the great reset, when we break down tribalism, break down racism, it's not going to be easy. We're going to seem strange. You go into the bank and the banker says, Mr. Abdul, do you want interest? And you say no. And they say, he's strange. Summertime comes and people here in the West, they take off their clothes and we're putting on our clothes. They say, that's strange. I give you glad tidings that the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna al-Islam bada'a gharibin wa sayyaudu gharibin fatuba lil ghuraba. The Prophet ﷺ said, Islam began strange and will return to being strange, so glad tidings to the strangers. And they asked him, O Messenger of Allah, wa mal ghuraba? Who are the strangers? And he answered, Aladina yuslihuna in the fasad al nas. They are the people who correct things. They repair themselves. They repair the world when the people have become corrupted. And Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, corruption is ruling the minds of the people through deception. And with our Islam, with a great reset in our Islam, we can make a major difference today. And we can only pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have mercy upon this ummah. May Allah Azza wa Jal 
have mercy on the children of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have mercy and give dignity to the women of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give strength and leadership to the men of this Ummah. May Allah take our misguided leaders from darkness into light. And may Allah help us to be with them when the direction comes, when the call comes. Answer the call as my brother Allah said, don't leave your post. Whatever you can possibly do, change evil with your hands. Change it with your tongue. Feel it in your heart. Anything you can do, it's a great test that we are under today. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us victory. And Allah has promised for all those who die in his path that they will enter Jannah, they will be on the highest level. And it is said, when the shaheed on the other side, when he is asked, what would you love the most? He said, I want to go back to the earth and die in the path of Allah so that I can gain what I am gaining in this world. So don't cry for those shuhada. Don't cry for the martyrs. We need to cry for ourselves as to what we are doing at this point. Allah has given us life. Allah has given us wealth. And I pray that Allah would bless the organizers of this festival. Allah would bless you, protect your children, protect this ummah, and give us victory on the ground. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us. May Allah raise up a new generation, reset, to take us from darkness into light and to bring truth to the front of this world. I leave you with these thoughts. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.